Hello, this is Joshua and um, welcome back. So for this video, we will be discussing about amino acids and peptides. Again, the topic outline will be provided on the following slide. So as usual, these are the specific topics that we will be covering for this video. Okay, so you can just go through these. Okay, so we've established before that all forms of life are ultimately based on the four biomolecules. Okay. Remember, we have your proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So for this video, we'll be focusing on your protein. Okay. So amino acids are organic compounds that contain an amino group and carboxyl group as shown on uh, the figure. We've also mentioned that these biomolecules are actually polymers, meaning they are derived from monomers and the uh, monomer okay of your protein is your amino acid so i i hope you still remember um our lesson before let us note that among all possible amino acids okay, 20 are usually found in proteins and that 10 of those amino acids are essential amino acids okay so meaning they cannot be synthesized by the human body thus we need to supply it via our diet. Okay, we'll discuss this further as we go along. Okay, so the general structure of your amino acid include your amino group, okay, which is attached to the carbon adjacent to the carboxyl group. Okay, so we call this your alpha amino acid. Again, we call this your alpha amino acid. And it also includes your carboxyl group, okay, and the R group, which is both bound okay, to the alpha carbon. Let us also note that the R group is the one that gives identity to your amino acid. Okay. So the two-dimensional structure of your amino acid, okay, shown here, can only partially convey their common structure because one of the most important properties of your amino acid is their three-dimensional shape okay so or your stereochemistry okay so i hope that you still remember them from your art camp class okay so when drawing amino acids alam na dapat natin that it's always ncc meaning okay your amino group n is bonded to your alpha carbon which is also bonded to your carboxyl group. Again, your R group here varies because as mentioned, it's what gives identity to your amino acids. Okay, so if you will look at the uh, alpha carbon, okay, if you will look at the alpha carbon here, you will notice that there is an asterisk. And we know from Orchem that when there is an asterisk on your carbon atom, it means to say, that it's chiral. So, um, on the next slide, we'll be discussing these. Okay. So, I have a question here. If you will look at the amino acid presented, why is it that the amino group and the carboxyl group are both charged and that neutral? Okay, so there's a simple logic here. So, the charge denotes that the amino acid is in biological system or biological setting. Now, why? Remember that there are buffer system in our body and that we have our own physiological pH. Now, that same system okay, is responsible for the protonation of your amino group and the deprotonation of your carboxyl group. So there, remember this. No? So remember the effect of the pH with that of the structure or the charge of your amino acid because this is going to be helpful when we're discussing na about Zwitter ions. Now we move to the uh, properties that are associated with the central atom. Okay, so first here is that it has chirality, meaning there are four different substituents bonded to the central carbon. You have your carboxyl, amino, R, and H. Okay, so those are the um, groups bonded or the substituents bonded to your um, carbon. So the two stereoisomers of your amino acids are designated as L or D. 
Note that this configuration are based on L-glyceryl behind. And it's not related whatsoever with your R and S configuration. So you have an L-amino acid when your amino group is on the left side, L, left side, of the alpha carbon. There. Whereas, you have the amino acid when your amino group is on the right side of the alpha carbon. Okay, so note that all, okay, note that all amino acids have chirality except for your glycine. Also, the L amino acids are natural, okay, meaning um, these are the ones used as the building blocks of your proteins. Okay, so still with the properties uh, associated with the central car carbon, okay, we have here also your optical activity. Now, optical activity refers to the ability of the molecule to, to rotate plane polarized light, now, which is a consequence of its asymmetry. Okay, so you have your D, dextro rotatory, okay, when the plane polar polarized light is rotated clockwise, and you have your Levo rotatory, sure, L, when rotation is counterclockwise. Okay, so here are the structures of your 20 amino acids. So we'll not be discussing it one by one here, and no? I'll just highlight some. What you really need to know is uh, the property of the R groups, okay? You have to be able to remember their properties as it is important no? in trying to understand the stability of the protein especially when it comes to the primary structure of your proteins okay so your r groups here are classified based on several criteria okay two of which are particularly important okay so the first of these is the uh, polar or non-polar nature of the side chain and the second depends on the presence of an acidic or basic amino or basic group Note that when we say that the R group of your amino acid is positively charged, it means to say that your amino acid is basic. Well, when it's negatively charged, we have an acidic amino acid. Of course, other useful criteria is um, knowing the functional groups present okay, so in the side chain and the nature okay, of those groups. So again, um, these are your common amino acids. So we'll just go through some of these on the following slides. Okay. So aside from your common amino acid, we also have here your uncommon amino acids. Okay. So example of which are your hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. So they are, they are of course derived from your common amino acids no? and are modified via okay, post-translational modification. Okay. So We'll go there once we're on the lecture about central dogma. Na. Okay, so note that these are found only in few connective tissues. No? So proteins such as your collagen. So let's look at some of the nonpolar R groups. So here are some ways okay, on how you can remember the R groups. Okay, so you can develop your own. Okay, so this is what I've learned. Okay, so... Glycine here is telling you that he is not chiral. Remember, we've made mention about that earlier. Okay, so valine, on the other hand, has a V-shaped R group. Okay, so V-valine. On the other hand, okay, um, methionine is telling you that he is the first amino acid in translation. Okay, so note that AUG is the start codon in your protein synthesis. Now, let's look at some of your polar R groups naman. Okay, so serine and threonine here are telling you that they love phosphorylation. Also included here is your tyrosine. So, why? Because they are nucleophilic due to the presence of hydroxyl group, your OH. If you're not yet familiar, protein phosphorylation is a reversible post-translational modification, okay, in which your amino acid residue is phosphorylated, okay, by a protein kinase. So, we'll discuss that further um, as we go along. 
So, Sistine naman is telling you that he forms bridges. Okay. Remember here your disulfide, bridge. And, okay, proline is telling you that he is an amino acid. And due to its structure, it is rigid. Now, this is where hydroxyproline is derived. Asparagine naman is the amide version of your aspartate. Okay. Okay, so now let's move to basic R groups. Okay, so your arginine has guanidino group, which looks like urea. Your histidine on the other hand have imidazole ring, and it's the least basic in the group. Okay, so which have an, um, what was it? An almost neutral PI. No? So your isoelectric point. No? So we'll discuss this later. Okay, so let's look at naman yung ating acidic R groups. Now, so by the way, your amino acids can be referred to as a, a three-letter or one-letter code, no? a list of which will be provided on the following slide. So now, that being said, okay, how do we remember your negatively charged R groups? Okay, let's look at aspartate. Okay, note that the uh, one-letter code for aspartate is D. Okay. What's the reason for that? If you will count the carbon atom present in this particular amino acid, you will find that it has four carbons. Okay. And the corresponding letter, K, okay, in the alphabet for four is the letter D. And there, that's how they did that. So same thing for your glutamate. Okay. The one letter code for glutamate is E. That is because it has five carbons. Okay, so lastly, let's move to the uh, non-polar aromatic R groups. No? So, let us note that since you have here conjugation, it follows that these amino acids can absorb at different wavelength. Okay. Uh, your phenylalanine here absorbs at around 260 nanometer. Okay. While your tyrosine naman and tryptophan absorbs at around 280 nanometer. Now, also your tryptophan here have indole ring. No? It is worth remembering that these amino acids are essential. Okay, or essential amino acids. Now, so why? If you will look at your structure, you'll notice that they are aromatic and thus complicated R groups. Now, your body can synthesize them because it's going to cost too much energy and at the same time, okay, we lack the enzyme to do so. That's why, wala kang choice but to supply it to your body via that. Okay, so again, as mentioned before, okay, 10 of the 20 amino acids are essential. So meaning they cannot be synthesized by humans. Okay, so one of the reasons for that is because we lack the enzyme no, to help uh, on the uh, synthesis. Okay, so provided here on the uh, top part is the uh, one-letter code for uh, one of your uh, essential amino acid and if you go naman pababa is the three letter code for the same amino acid okay so for example phenylalanine has p as its one letter code and phe or phe for its three letter code okay um so provided here is a table of the three letter and um one letter code of your amino acids now so okay um, you have to uh, memorize this or um, at the very least, okay, be uh, familiar with it. No? So same thing with the uh, structure of your amino acids. You have to uh, familiarize yourselves um, with the structure of your R groups. Okay, so um, because of their functional groups, no? so amino acids are amphoteric in nature, meaning they can act as both acids and bases. No? So at neutral pH, okay, the carboxyl group is negatively charged. Okay, so while the amino acid group is positively charged. Now, so let's introduce now the uh, concepts of uh, zwitter ions. Okay, zwitter ions are electrically neutral compounds where um you have an equal positive and negative charge. Okay, so note that you have a charged molecule but neutral over um overall. Okay, also note that um, amino acids, okay, 
without charge groups on the side chain exist in neutral solution as zwitter ions. Okay, so um, remember your zwitter ions are electrically neutral compounds. Okay, um, you have charged parts, okay, but neutral overall. Okay, so due to its dipolar ion form, amino acid exhibits physical properties, okay, associated with salt as listed here. Okay, so you can just go through that. Again, as mentioned, okay, your amino acids are amphoteric in nature.